Long before Windows 8 was the worst version of Windows ever released, there was Windows Vista, the worst version of Windows ever released. And long before Windows Vista, there was Windows Millennium Edition, the worst version of Windows ever released. Yes, Windows Millennium Edition quickly became synonymous with operating system instability, and was even more quickly replaced by Microsoft's next flagship product, Windows XP. But is all that hatred warranted, or will it win me over? That's what I plan to explore here today on this episode of Print and Play Retrospective. For today's operating system experiments, I'll be using the Voodoo 5 machine that I built a couple of months ago. Luckily, since the operating system is stored on an SD card, I can just swap it for a new one and leave my Windows 98 install fully intact. The first step I follow with any Windows 9X operating system installation is to format the drive and then copy the installation files for the operating system to it. This prevents the operating system from asking you to reinsert the OS CD every time it needs a file and makes it way more convenient. From there, I ran the setup program and my serial mouse doesn't work. That also happened in Windows 98, so it's not entirely unexpected. Luckily, I know my way around the keyboard, so it's only an inconvenience and not a showstopper. After some initial file setup and a restart, we're on to hardware detection and it's looking a lot more like Windows. Once the install completed and we rebooted, we're actually into Windows, although my mouse still isn't working. Well, not to worry. I'll just have it check for new hardware and, sure enough, it finds a serial mouse attached. I'm still not entirely sure why the initial hardware detection during Windows installation doesn't find it, but it's an easy enough thing to fix. Well, with Windows installed, we're going to need some drivers and luckily, it's a snap to fix that. And that looks a lot better. So I started to install my support software and the first tool I installed was Daemon Tools, only to find that the system wouldn't finish booting after restarting. Although this version works perfectly in my installation of Windows 98, a quick Google search told me that other people had run into the same problem. So I just booted into safe mode, removed it, and then installed a slightly older version that works just fine with the system. Now, before we get too deep into playing with additional software, I think it's important to highlight the new things that Windows ME tried to bring to the table. It featured a tweak UI that, while not a huge departure from Windows 95 and 98, was more similar to Windows 2000. Things that would become a staple of Windows going forward, such as Autocomplete, saw their first home release here. It also saw faster boot times due to its dropping of legacy file support such as the autoexec.bat and config.sys, and the movement of smart drive and high memory management into the io.sys, as well as optimizations to how the system registry was handled. We also saw our first implementation of the system restore functionality, allowing the operating system to create snapshots of itself before installing new software updates. This meant that, if recent system changes were causing instability, you could roll back to an older config and recover. And for the creative types, Windows Movie Maker saw its first version with Windows Millennium Edition. This basic video editing software would end up being available for nearly two decades before finally being discontinued in 2017. While it's primitive by today's standards, when this came out originally, I spent hours playing with it, editing clips together from videos and movies, and even using it to convert some movies into video CDs. This was Microsoft's response to Apple's iMovie in an attempt to say, hey, we do more than spreadsheets over here. And while I don't think it ever gained the same amount of adoption, it was still an admittedly cool feature to add. Windows ME also brought forward the first Windows automatic updates. While this feature, unsurprisingly, doesn't work anymore, it certainly simplified the process of keeping Windows up to date, and it's a feature that's been present in Windows ever since. Well, now that we've seen some key changes and inclusions, let's get some software and games installed. My goal was to set this up how I would have used it as a daily driver when it was new. This meant installing an antivirus, in this case an old copy of AVG, as well as some productivity software and some games. The installation of Microsoft Office went perfectly as did Need for Speed 3. When I started to install X-Wing vs TIE Fighter however, I started getting some graphical glitches. After the installation was complete, I attempted to reboot the machine and was met with a blue screen. And we aren't even using it yet. 
I also wanted to benchmark Windows ME against Windows 98 to see how its performance varied, so I relied on 3D Mark for that. So, after running them back to back several times, the results were pretty consistent, and gave Windows ME about a 10% lead on identical hardware. Of course, extra gaming performance only counts if you can actually play your games. Star Trek Armada, one of the games that's been more picky about running properly, actually ran perfectly fine. Audio issues are common for this game, but none of them showed up here. Unreal Tournament felt buttery smooth and I played through the first match and thought all was well. Unfortunately, when I attempted to return to Windows, it hardlocked the computer and I had to power down and restart to get back in. Three, two, one, go! Need for Speed 3 started off running great, but at a particularly particle-dense moment only a couple of minutes into the game, it slowed down before finally stopping. And unfortunately, it never recovered. Outside of gaming, at the turn of the millennia, MP3 music was all the rage, and Audio Grabber was the main program I used for digitizing my audio CDs so I could play them on my computer. While the software was no longer able to automatically grab the CD information for me off the internet, I was still able to enter the information in manually and then rip the CD at a pretty decent speed. From there, I was able to fire up another staple of music playback back then, Winamp, and load my music in. Here we can see that Winamp was able to read all of the tag information from the audio I just ripped. However, we can't hear it, as I don't want to end up with a copyright hit on this video. And of course there's productivity software. I suspected Microsoft Office, being a Microsoft product, would probably be okay under Windows ME, and while I didn't spend hours typing up fake documents to test its performance, it seemed to be just fine. I also had a copy of Photoshop 6.0 and decided to give it a try. While I don't know how we ever survived with such small singular screens, Photoshop was quick and responsive here as I did some recoloring work on the included sample of a zebra. After doing some searching, I was kind of surprised to find out that ICQ is still a thing. And while there have been newer versions of the clients released over the years, I was unable to find one that would still run on Millennium Edition and be able to connect to the servers. But hey, at least I could load the sound effects into Winamp and pretend. Uh -oh. User is online. When it comes to DOS support, most stuff runs okay. But remember at the beginning of the video when I said that they did away with the config.sys and autoexec.bat? Well, that's in part because they did away with MS-DOS mode entirely. So instead of being able to reboot into a pure DOS environment, you have to rely on DOS applications working normally under Windows. To help support DOS applications, it also included a DOS virtual machine, which worked quite well for Lemmings. But if you can't get your software working under Windows ME or under the virtual machine, then you're out of luck. There are workarounds, like an unofficial patch that re-adds MS-DOS mode, or using a boot disk, but this video is more about the out-of-box experience. There was occasional other weirdness during usage. Sometimes, on a fresh boot, Windows ME would just lock up. The mouse would move, but the computer wouldn't respond to anything. At one point, I rebooted, only to have Windows ME redetect the network card and drop the driver entirely, as if the card had just been fresh installed. And, bizarrely, I never once saw the Windows ME splash screen. It just remained on the summary screen generated by the BIOS before popping into the desktop. Weird. Over the time I was using it, Windows ME ended up feeling like a wasted opportunity to me. In terms of visuals, it definitely felt polished and like a step forward from previous versions of Windows, but I also hit a lot of points where it was just unstable or unpredictable, and I think it's no wonder that so many people dropped it to go back to Windows 98, especially since I'm not aware of any hardware that supported Windows ME, but not Windows 98. I certainly don't hate it, but it won't be taking over my daily retro needs anytime soon. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
If you did, don't forget to toss me a thumbs up or subscribe for future videos. It really helps a lot. And a special thanks to my Patreon supporters who are scrolling across the screen right now. Their help makes sure that content like this can keep coming for years to come. I'll see you again soon on another Print and Play Retrospective.